Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'd like to do a quick update video since I haven't uploaded a video on my channel in about six months. Well, yeah, about that time. And it's been even longer since I've had an update video. So I just wanted to uh, touch ground a little bit and just say how I've been and what I've been up to and anything that's new. Um, well, it's today is March 11th, 2020, and it, yes, okay, it's March 11th, 2020, and school is going good, I am doing good in my classes, I'm doing good this semester, which this semester is my second semester of my sophomore year. We're at the pretty much end of it now. We have a month and like a month and a half left to go. Um, then I'll be a junior. That's because that's how that goes. But anyway, it's been good. Um, I realized what I want to do. I know I think my last update video, which was like 11 months, pretty much a year ago now. Um, I, w I changed my major to just history um, and before that I was secondary um, certificate a history secondary certificate major which means that I was going to also among my history courses um, take education courses and um, get a degree certificate to teach history in public schools and high school and um, so forth middle school and high school um, so yeah, I changed my mind on that. So I, now I'm history as stated before, and I realized what I want to do. I want to work for the park service, um, preferably, uh, at a historic site, either the national park service or state park service. Um, one of those is where I'm leaning. Um, I'm taking, I've been taken since last summer. Um, some steps to uh, fulfill that um, that career path that I want to take, um, get some experience, which I'll get into in a minute. But um, yes, so my park service is what I want to do. Um, as for experience, I have started volunteering at a local historic site, um, National Park Service. And see right here. How cool is that? That might be backwards, but it's volunteer hat for National Park Service. Um, if you can see right there, that is, I might post some pictures on the video, I'm not sure yet. That is my uh, uniform for, uh, well, first off, let me backtrack. I was hired on um, to the National Park Service volunteer program. Uh, VIP program. I was hired on as a um, living historian volunteer. Um, you don't get paid, of course. You're volunteering. But um, so I do interpretive work. Um, hopefully, a lot more of that in the future. But right now, um, we're pretty much been training. We've had two training sessions, and I am the commander of a swivel gun unit. And what a swivel gun is, for those who do not know, and I know that I did not really 100% know all the details before but a swivel gun is basically it's uh, part of the cannon family it's a small cannon um, ours is the smallest of the small so it's the baby of the baby as um, the uh, one of, is it one of the park um, managers I guess is the right uh, I guess the right word to use um, put it so a swivel gun basically it's just a small cannon Ours is a half pounder, so the smallest of the small, and it's on a thing, so you have the gun, the piece, then it's on a, um, this little, this rod, which you screw together, and it's, uh, called the, that's called the swivel, and the gun's on it, so, and it, that slides into a wooden placement, or on a wall of a, a fort, and basically, the, um, person holding the teller, which is a wooden piece connected to the metal, to, connect, connected to the gun, and basically, you just 
as fast as you can move it, the gun will move. It's because it's that's why it's called swivel, and you fire it. So I'm the commander of that piece. Um, it's a three-man crew, and it's it's been so much fun. It's been so rewarding. Um, I'm enjoying volunteering so much. I love it, and I really f believe I found my passion. Um, so yes, I'm leaning towards uh, historic sites, with, whether it's National Park Service or State Park Service in the state that I reside. Um, if I do, but as I've reached out and touched base with some people who've worked in Park Service, rangers and people, um, I've talked to them, and one in particular, you know, I've got some advice, and basically, for my degree, I can work pretty much in a park, really, whether that be um, as one, per as the uh, person who oversees the volunteers at my where I volunteer at has said um, the nature parks. You got nature parks, which is you know just parks that. Then you have the historic sites, but each um, but as I've been told by another ranger, each park, whether it's nature park, or has history to it, and there's use for interpretation, and also not only interpretation and history I want to be familiar with. I want to learn everything that goes into park service that comes down to management to maintenance to everything I have plenty of experience with retail I've worked retail retail for about four years um, but it's everything that goes into park service I think I found my passion so that's exciting and among the interpretive history living history um, yeah we're we've been training and we're getting ready for an event coming up which is a with the biggest event for the park that I volunteer at and we'll be firing uh, some historic weapons. Uh, as I said before, I'm the commander of the swivel gun unit, and we will fire that piece. Um, I'm really excited because it's just a blast to fire it. Um, so yes, I, as the commander, I give the commands the drill, which uh, our drill is based off a drill by a man named William Stevens, if that is correctly his name, which I believe so, um, if I remember from the manual. Um, based, I think Will, William Stevens. There was a Brit. It was based off a British drill for uh, artillery, and it was originally 16 men piece, and he got that down to six men. But for the purposes of the swivel gun, it's just a three man piece, um, you know, needed. But you can't have a fourth man. And this is all a ramble. This whole update. You can have a fourth man, and the fourth man will be the uh, powder monkey. Um, basically, uh, it just helps out, and he will go get the um, the cartridges from the ammunition box or crate, and uh, bring it up to the piece. And it just uh, saves time. I have it's easier having a fourth man, but it's really very. It's still very efficient having just three three men on the piece. So that's something that's been the most exciting and I'm really excited for as more as much more of that I'm excited for um, also among that living historian and interpretation and all that um, I'm also volunteering for anything else I can to gain as much experience as I can I'm volunteering and I have we have an event coming up soon which is uh, deals with astronomy so we will have telescopes which I've been trained a little I've been trained one day which you know should be enough apparently and it you know it's just for fun and we have the public come out and then we have these um, telescopes and we will uh, just point out some constellations and tell a story about the constellations but instead of it being more Greek because um, every civilization has history with um, has a story to tell with the constellations but you know it's usually from what we know in Western culture is usually the Greek interpretation, but I think ours how we'll tell the story, or how my um, I will say the uh, park administrator, um, I'll use that term for this video. Uh, we'll be doing more of a uh, Native American interpretation, or something more of just uh, something more where it fits into our uh, park story in a way, just something more relatable to our area 
Um, so that's exciting, and we get to, to see this, the planets that are visible. I think um, we'll be able to see Saturn. I don't think we'll be able to see Mars due to some reasons. I'm not that big into it. I'm not that familiar with astronomy, but I'm very excited. It was very fun. I'm messing with the telescopes, and I'm excited for more. Um, it's more time. I got family coming, and it's just going to be a great time, uh, hopefully. And um, what else? What else we got here? Um, classes. Classes are going good. Um, I am in really enjoying all my classes. Last semester, so I'm in the second semester of my sophomore year right now. Last semester was kind of rough. I didn't really enjoy it too, too much. Had some problems with roommate situation. Um, <coughs> classes weren't really my favorite, 100%. But this semester has been just an improvement in life itself. Um, really happy about my dorm situation. Um, classes are going great. Even my gen ed classes that I still have. <laughs> um, I'm really enjoying those. I got statistics, which is absolutely my favorite math. Um, I loved it in high school. I really love it in college. Um, I have biology, which I really, really enjoy, actually. Um, and it comes with a lab, which is like two, three-ish hours, and that kind of sucks. But it's good because I have my girlfriend in there, so, you know, and it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, so it, it just takes, it's just a long time to be in a classroom. But at least sometimes we get to cool, do cool stuff, but it's all right. That's probably the least favorite thing I have going on with classes. And I have my history courses, of course. I have my U.S. history course from 1877 to 1920. 21, 1920, so around there that time. I have my 399 history, which is historiography, which is the study of history itself. And then I have something that's really interesting that actually really fits in with my career path, which is wildlife, wildlife conservation history, which is the history of um, conservation in America. Um, and it was just, we're basically, it's a, lit, it's a reading class. So we read a bunch of books on the topic. And then at the very end of the semester, and we, based on our classes are, we just discuss the chapters in depth, and it's really, I'm really enjoying the class. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, at the end of the semester, we will write a historiography paper on the books we've read. And just like in my 399 class, we'll also write a historiography paper in that class, too. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing some research for that paper, because that paper, we have to choose a topic for 399, and then we... Uh, gather the primary sources, secondary sources that are um, the most valuable to historians to research that topic. And so right now I'm, I'm gathering the sources I need for that paper and going to get a little start on it because we only have a month and a half left. It's good to get a head, head start. Pretty much putting focus on that over my wildlife conservation paper because we still have more material to get through. We have a we basically have two books and some, I think, another article to get through. Um, it's a lot of reading. This semester is a lot of reading, but it's actually, I got into a good pace with it. I'm actually ahead right now, so it's really good. And then we'll write that paper at the end. So, um, my topic, so I think I know my focus is really going to be, especially for my 499 senior seminar, which comes my senior year, you know. Um, I believe you can do it whenever you have enough credit hours. Or however that works. I'm going to do it my senior year just because it fits. Um, you do, basically, that's your your big paper. And you present it to the uh, to the to professors. And it's a big, it's your big thing. So I think I know my focus could be American Revolutionary Period History or just American History in general. Um, my park that I volunteer at, which um, is Revolutionary Era, so that's where I'm really getting a lot of inspiration from. I'm really enjoying American history, and I've been on the fence because I love all kinds of history, ancient history, everything. But I really think my my passion, my focus, is turning has be has real has been realized as American history. Um, so my focus for my 399 paper is on the back country of South on the back country of South Carolina, 
which was basically the frontier of the uh, South Carolina during the period of um, well, since basically first English colonists um, came to uh, South South Carolina, and you know up to the Revolutionary War, it's you know it was the it was the frontier, it was remote ish, but you know there's a lot of history there, a lot of history that's overlooked, but there's still some really good authors on the subject and good material. There's um, Bass, which I'm still gathering lots. I'm just started my research, but one I'm one author who has done an excellent secondary source, and his material is excellent for the topic is um, his name is Bass. Here I got his book right here. I've rented from the library. Um, his book is 96, which I've learned that 96 was a you know. Uh, was a village but is also 96 it was a whole geographical area of the backcountry which could be classified from all the way from i believe in aiken region to south carolina aiken south carolina to like greenville or so forth it's a large area i'm not too familiar with that aspect of it but it's i believe for a certain period of time it calling the area 96 encompass encompass um a large area a geographic area but his book by bass is um 96 the struggle for the south carolina backcountry so uh, it might be backwards because i'm recording backwards but yes let me get the full name of the author um which this book i've noticed at the yeah robert d bass it's backwards but yeah, Robert D. Bass, and I've noticed in the uh, gift shop, which of the uh, historic site I volunteer at, they actually have that book, and I actually got this book before. I just noticed that, so it's actually recommended by the site, which focuses on the backcountry, South Carolina. So that's makes you know more valuable that way. So that's really good to have that confirmation that he is um, credi very credible. He's known as well, he's passed away now, so he was known as one of the most uh, renowned historians of the revolutionary um, South Carolina backcountry period. So I have him, and then I have some one very. I'm using one. I have one primary source right now, which is there's tons, but one I'm definitely 100% using going to use, and that is um, by Charles Wood Mason, who is. I might link some materials in the bottom. He is. Or, excuse me, he was a, a preacher, Anglic Anglican, um, and he resided in the backcountry. He kind of came there to help out and, pre and preach and help out the locals in the backcountry. And he was a leader of the South Carolina Regulators Movement, and he was a loyalist during the Revolution. So his material is probably one of the best like completed journals and account of the life in the backcountry of South Carolina during that time which is invaluable and doing some research I've you know confirmed that his account is one of the best but we also have to look out for some bias because he was a loyalist and there seems to be I do need to do more research but it seems to be a um, a war of elitism, I guess the word, I don't know, it's something more of just, he kind of looked down on the locals in a way, calling them dirty and everything, but perhaps that, but he also showed care for them, because he did help them, obviously, he wouldn't be there otherwise, but there's more to that story, but it may be a person, I get my elitist view from this, other people are saying, other people are saying, I need to do more research, but also though, my conservation course class has to deal with a lot of um, sportsmen and elitists, you know, looking down at other groups as they progress conservation. But anyway, I'm rambling. I'm really am rambling. This whole video is just a ramble. It's not very well put together, but it's just something. Um, so enough of classes, everything. Life's going great. Um, uh, me and my girlfriend are going strong, very happy. We are, have I gotten to it? We are at two years now, two years and, uh, we are two years since December, 
so December, January, January, February, February, March, we're in March now, yeah, so year and three months, so, yeah, uh, excuse me, two years and three months, excuse me, and uh, so we are going, we are doing great, um, broke as heck, uh, always broke, college makes you broke, and especially when you're in college, and I, I mean, I work part-time, but especially when you're in college, and you know, you're trying to balance school and work, and you also got bills to pay, car payments and phone bills and such, and all that good stuff. You, you kind of broke all the time. But we are planning a trip this summer, which I'm really excited for. Uh, um, I just, you know, hopefully that all pulls through, goes good. Um, should be, should be uh, on track for that plan. So, um, hmm, what else, what else, what else, what else, I don't really know what else to talk about, I'm just much talking about this school, my life, it's going good, um, yeah, school life, my volunteering, but yeah, doing good, I hopefully get more videos on this channel, but you know, that's not a promise. Um, next video I make hopefully be more, less than, less, it'll be less than a ramble and more of a actual well put together video. But, um, I think I'll end it here. I don't, if I have anything else to say, I'll say it in the next video. But thanks for listening to everybody. Um, I look forward to the next video. I will uh, see y'all in the next one.